second here, pull up my screen. I'm very excited to do a part two today. And I know we have several other people popping in. Um, and actually, I'm curious today, uh, instead of doing typing something that you are grateful for in the chat, I would like to know if you are, uh, if you enjoy the snow or are you over snow? <laughs> or do you not even have snow where you are? Because I'm still stuck in Charleston, um, was supposed to go back to Kentucky on Monday and couldn't because of the weather. And yesterday I told Heather it was 63 and sunny here yesterday. So I was, yeah, way over it, over it. Dawn, take the lead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Scott. Thanks for being on. Yep. Ash, does Asheville have snow right now? I don't, I don't think I saw any there. Don Aldrich's, uh, don't, you're not allowed to comment. <laughs> it, it's probably uh, 95 and beautiful there today. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Oh, I knew it would be. Very, very jealous. Yes. Yep. Yep, I think hopefully I'm kind of over that uh, groundhog too. I think we should do away with, <laughs> with <laughs> him every year. <laughs> I think he needs to retire. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, Jessica loves the snow. I knew Ashley. Ash, I knew you would love it. You and Troy both. Okay, guys. So today we're going to talk about uh, part two of the war, the battle, battle of the warfield of your mind. And I posted this picture. Be very careful about what you think about because your thoughts run your life. And so um, this actually Craig Groeschel's new book, I think it dropped on the 16th. Yeah, yesterday. Um, and so I mine is delivered to my Kentucky house. So I haven't gotten to uh, see it yet but I'm anxious to get back and read it this weekend. So um, the two things that I love from this book that he starts with is your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts and what you think will determine what you become. And so today, what I wanted to do um, is, is go through a couple of examples from the masterclass part two. We, we did this last week. So if you missed last week, you can go back and watch it in Facebook. But he says, most of life's battles are won or lost in your mind. Um, and so for people that are on people of faith, the devil tries to shape your thinking one lie at a time. And so here's one of the, some of the examples that he gives in the book that are so true. We all have our own examples, but we'll just use these because they were, they were good ones. I thought I'll never be good enough. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never lose this weight. My whole family are bigger people. I'll never be a great parent. My past is too bad. I can't get over it. I made too big of mistakes. Uh, I don't hold it all together like everyone thinks I do. I'll never make more money. This is just how I'm supposed to live. There are, for some of us, it may, maybe we'll never get rid of COVID. We'll never get to go see people again. We'll never get to go to a movie theater. Um, there's all sorts of lies that sometimes we can, we can get caught up in. And so he says, remember, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And so I want to talk about this for a minute. Um, the life we have is a reflection of the thoughts that we think. So he, first of all, encourages you to think about what you think about. And the way that you do that is through a thought audit. And so there's three things, and you should definitely write these down and, um, and be honest and think about, think about your thought audit. <laughs> Sounds weird to say. Um, but so the first one is, do you wake up in the morning and do you think worried or do you think peaceful thoughts um, on a scale of one to 10? So one being you wake up thinking very worried thoughts and 10 being you wake up thinking very peaceful thoughts. Um, and I feel like right now would be interested to hear what you guys think in the chat, but I feel like right now some of us really think more worried thoughts and um, I don't know if it's just because of every the, the pandemic and because of just the economy or whether you were excited about the election or upset about the election or whatever that looked like for you. I feel like there's more worried thoughts now. So really rate yourself on do you wake up and think worried or do you think peaceful? The second one is do you wake up and think um, negative or do you think positive? And and that is kind of different than worried or peaceful. So for me, worried versus peaceful um, is more of, uh, well, for me, it's kind of a spiritual thing, but also 
It's just when you think about the future, the negative versus the positive is more of an everyday attitude and mindset type. Um, and so do you just in general feel like your attitude is negative or more positive? Um, and then, oh, Jennifer, yep. Oh, you and Tracy said the same thing. Yeah. So you wake up very peaceful. And as the day goes on, the scale goes down. Um, and then Tracy said, I start the day good thoughts, but then get derailed quickly. Uh, I think that's probably that's probably very true for most people. Um, I tend to be the same way. And then actually, uh, probably my most anxious is, are probably before bed, I would say. I don't know. I need to think about that. But And then the last one is, do you think worldly thoughts or eternal thoughts, no matter what you believe in? Are you stuck in like the day to day worldly? Um, the example that he gave of this is social media <laughs> and uh, the news. And um, are we stuck in really worldly thoughts? Are we caught up in what everyone around us is doing? Um, are we caught up in the news? Are we caught up in all of those things? Or are we caught up? Do we catch ourselves thinking more about eternal? I think for me, that's probably the most difficult one. Um, or the one that I would have the lowest score in. Um, but but uh, but it's interesting just to just to rate yourself and see. So the first step is to do a thought audit. The second step is to answer two foundational questions. Um, and I'm going to share this at the end too. I put this in the Facebook group. This is like quickly one of my new favorite quotes. You cannot have a positive life with negative thoughts. Um, and so the first one is you have to first identify the biggest stronghold that holds you back. So what's the biggest stronghold that actually holds you back? Is it, I'm not good with money. I'll never be happy. I'll never find a spouse. My past is too bad. I'm too old. My best days are behind me. I can't lose weight. I've tried. I'll never have kids or um, I don't like the kids I have. <laughs> no, none of you, I don't think would say that. Um, what is the biggest stronghold that actually holds you back? Because if you don't identify it, and remember, we all have one. If you are watching on Facebook or if you're on the Zoom and you're thinking that you don't have one, then you probably need to think a little bit more about it because everybody has a stronghold. Most of us have more than one stronghold. But first, you have to identify that. And here's why. Every thought creates a neuro thought in your body. And so the more that you think a thought, and I've studied this for years, actually, probably since the first time for you, Keller Williams, people that are on that I took bold, I think was when I started really thinking about this. Um, science tells us that it's easier to think that thought over and over and over again. So the more that you're thinking something, you're actually training your mind to keep thinking that thought. And he says, if you believe a lie for long enough, then you start to be impacted that that lie is true. And so what you have to do to fix that is you have to create a new path in your mind. And sometimes we think that that's not possible, but the truth is that it is. So whether you're a person of faith or not, you, step number two is you have to name the truth. So first you have to identify what it is in your mind. Um, and then you have to demolish that stronghold. So uh, you, you, for people of faith, you may demolish that with a Bible verse. Um, others people, you may f begin to focus on the positive to that. So like making a pros and cons list, or if it's a negative, then you could start to list all the things that are possible or positive. And Craig Rochelle told the story, and I think this is the funniest story. I'm going to butcher it. So you guys probably have to just go listen to him tell it. Um, but he says that they were having this meeting, I think it was a meeting or a conference or something at his office one day, and that they thought that it would be funny to play a prank on one of their, their main guys on their team. And so he went into a closet to get something, and I think it was a closet, and they shut the door behind him, and they said, oh my gosh, you're locked in. The door won't unlock. It's it's broken. It's locked. And he was like, you're kidding. You got to get me out of here. Help me get out of here. And they're like, and Craig said, he's like, no, dude, it's locked. Like I, it's broken. Something's wrong. I can't get it. I can't get it undone. The guy never went to twist the knob to try to get out. He just believed the lie that they were saying. And he thought that he, he believed that he was stuck inside of this closet. And so he said for like, 30 minutes goes by. He never tries. He's stuck in there like, hey, can you guys call somebody? Can you try to help me get out? Never goes to try to fiddle with the knob. He just believes that it's broken. And so Craig says that then all of a sudden he's in another office and they're like, let's just see how long it's going to take him before he actually goes and tries this. He says before he knows it, he's in his office 
and he looks up and like the ceiling tiles are moving in the top of the of the office and he says that the guy still believed the lie never went and checked the door and found a way up through the vent took down the the filter and climbed up through the vent of this office in the ceiling to try to escape to get out of that room when all he ever had to do was just go over and try the door which i think is just the funniest story ever um but the the moral of that is that he he said some of us aren't living our best lives because we're believing the lie we're stuck in the closet when the door really isn't locked is what he said and i think that is so good i just love that so we have to really think about what that stronghold is and then we have to start to name the truths uh yes don that's so true i remember the john maxwell story about the monkeys climbing the pole too oh i'll have to share that next time so true so true um and so i just i think this is something great for us to think about today and so how do we fix this and i'm going to just end with this the the way that we fix this is through discipline in our mind and so i'm going to give you four steps um and so the first one is discipline starts in the mind before it ever brings results in your life and so you really have to think about that because he says, this is why it's so important to change the way that we think. Um, if any of you, one of my favorite books ever is Atomic Habits uh, by James Clear. Um, if you guys haven't read that, you should totally add it to your list. But, oh, well, hold on. Oh, there we go. One of the things that he says in the book is that instead of focusing on a goal that you want to achieve, focus on the identity that you want to have. So for example, if you want to start reading more, then you should start saying, I'm a reader. Or if you want to stop smoking, then you need to start saying to yourself, I'm not a smoker. Um, so you, you say the identity and you focus on that instead of the actual goal, which would be, I want to read, you know, 24 books this year. Number two is you choose in advance to stay committed to your mission over your feelings. This is the more difficult one because doubt and insecurity and frustration um, and all of the negative things that run through our mind, at some point they're going to start to set in. Um, and because you try to be mentally disciplined, you don't, you won't always feel like it. And I don't know about you guys, but definitely that's true for me. Some days you just wanna make excuses. Um, so he says, you don't have to allow your feelings to drive your decisions. Instead, you have to allow your discipline to overpower your excuses and renew your thoughts and feelings. Um, and many of you have heard, but discipline was going to be my word of the year uh, until Adam said to me, you know what Gary Keller says about discipline, right? There's no such thing as a disciplined person. And I'm like, what? And he said, yeah, he says, there's only people with good habits or bad habits. And so I changed my word from discipline to habits um, with the intention of, I, I intend to be more disciplined this year. Oh, let's see, hold on, am I going? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so, oh, the question around that, oh, my, my little PowerPoint's out of whack today, is this, for you to think about, what are some new identities that you want to be true of yourself? So if you had to come up with some new identities that you wanna have, what would a couple of those be? And really, I would challenge you to think about that. And then how might changing your thinking actually help you get there? Because it all begins and ends with our mindsets. Um, and remember, you can't have a positive life with negative thoughts. Number three in how we fix this is think about what you spend your time doing. So even if you think you're a disciplined person, um, and some of us really would say you're disciplined, I would love in the chat for you to type if you feel like you are a disciplined person person. I'd be interested to see how many of us really would say we feel like we're very disciplined. Um, you may be disciplined. You may just not be disciplined in the things that you want to be disciplined in. And this one actually hit me really hard. Um, and so what he said is, even if you eat ice cream before bed every night, uh, or for me, that used to be a bowl of cereal. I was really bad with cereal before night. Um, <laughs> or play video games, or you binge Netflix shows, that's actually still being disciplined and you're still doing something consistently. It, it just might not be the thing that you wanna spend your life doing. It might not be the thing you're intending to be disciplined in. Um, and so what you have to do with that is you have to think about what you're actually being uh, spending your time doing. And for some of us, that's kind of a tough pill to swallow. Um, and some of us are more disciplined in our professional lives than we are in our personal lives, I would say. And some of us are more disciplined maybe in your personal lives than you are in other things. I know there might be people who are really disciplined when it comes to their health, but maybe they're not when it comes to their wealth, or maybe they really are disciplined when it comes to their wealth. And maybe you're like Heather and you balance your checkbook every single week. 
<laughs> or maybe you're like me and you've never balanced a checkbook in your life. Um, or, and maybe you struggle with your health on the other side. There are certain things that people are very more disciplined about um, than what others are. So the fourth thing, the fourth, the last way is to start small. So he says, what if you decided that you're only going to watch one episode of your Netflix show at a time, or maybe you're just going to eat ice cream once a week, and then you're going to go to once a month. I'm trying, I am intending to do this right now, by the way, for January, some of you know this, but I did no alcohol, no sugar. Um, and so I'm, I'm starting small to content, which was not the alcohol wasn't difficult, but the sugar was very difficult for me. Not going to lie. Uh, very difficult. And now all this Easter candy is out and that's like my favorite. So I'm trying, I'm intending to start small. So I'm just now having alcoholic beverages, adult beverages and or sweets on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So only on the weekends <laughs> and yesterday, no day before yesterday, whoo, I was like, okay, this, this one's going to get me today. So often it takes pain in our circumstances to convince us that the pain of discipline is actually better. Um, one of my great friends and mentors, Linda McKissick always says when the, uh, when the pain of something is so great is when you'll actually make a change. But a lot of, a lot of us will not make changes in our life, but when the pain becomes so great that we can't take it anymore, then we will actually make a change. Um, and so he says, for example, you may actually damage a relationship because you're watching too much TV um, and that might motivate you to change your habits. But what we need to think about is what if we actually decided to change and be disciplined before we experienced the, uh, the consequence or before the pain got so bad that then we were forced to make a change. So we have to that's how we have to think about discipline. Um, and so I want you to just real quick to recap. Um, you have to you have to start in the mind before it ever brings results in your life. You have to choose in advance to stay committed to your mission over your feelings. You have to think about what you spend your time doing and you have to start small. And he says discipline is all about choosing what you want most over what you want in the moment. And that is all about having a strong mindset. Um, and he said, take time to think about what you really, really want the most over what you want in the moment. And last night I really, really as silly as it sounds. I just was hungry. I ate dinner too early. I ate dinner at like six o'clock. And then last night I was starving. Normally I would go get like a little, <laughs> little bowl of like lucky charms or something. I eat like a kid. Um, but I was thinking, I, I was putting this together, thinking about putting this together. And I knew I had quotes saved on my phone. I wanted to put in here this morning. And I thought, okay, no, I'm going to think about what I want most over what I want right now in this moment. And really the more that your, your brain starts to think like that, then it becomes something that you just automatically, automatically do and automatically think about. So this, this um, post blew up in the Facebook group and I just love it. And so I'm just, I'm continuing with this. Uh, you cannot have a positive life when you have a negative mind. And then lastly, discipline is all, oh, we just did that. Why is it going backwards? See, goodness, my slides are a little out of order today. Sorry, guys. Well, that might mean you just needed to see it twice. Discipline is all about choosing what you want most over what you want in the moment. Um, so if you haven't, you can definitely go order Craig Groeschel's new book um, on Amazon today. It is now officially live. And I do believe on his website, he has a little masterclass still. I, I did that. A lot of this came from that. It was really, really, really great. Um, and there's lots of encouraging things in there. Uh, and otherwise, that's it. So hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Thanks for being on. And for those of you that have the snow and don't like it, hopefully, oh, Heather said more like account balancing. There you go. Yes, Scott checkbook. <laughs> totally. I'm right there with you. All right, guys, have a great rest of your week. Thanks for being on. And I'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.